All right, welcome back everybody to Cuboid Outpost, episode five. Myself, Kairos, and Vern from Vern Indoors, who is hiding somewhere. Is you, sir? Yes, sir. Sir. Hi, sir. Yes, what, sir. What are you planning on doing with that there bow you got in your hand? Oh, uh, I'm just uh, exercising, sir. Is that what we call it these days? Yeah, see, it's just... Is that... Oop. Um, no, he, he tried to shoot. You know what? I got one of those between episodes, too. Nope, nope, nope. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. I'm just trying to give you your arrow back. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, oh and you happen to walk right into it. You shot me in the thigh, sir. Shot him in the thigh. I like how the arrow comes from the opposite direction that I shot you from. Yeah, that's still weird. Don't know he why that's a, happening. He was an adventurer, folks. That's right. Well... In between episodes, I did a little bit of uh, crafting around. Looks like it. Looks like it's just upgrading. A little bit. Went ahead and upgraded everything to as high as I could without unlocking anything else. It's like the. You also uh, got some armor. Yeah, that armor that you're wearing is the second best you can get from the cuboid set of materials. We need an anvil to upgrade it any farther. Wicked DM. Yeah, Wicked DM sword as well. Yep. Appreciate that, by the way. Yep. And as you can see through the windows, I was kind of busy myself in between I episodes. I see that. Got us some, some dirt. Have some a trees. Veritable forest going on out here. Yeah, it's just uh, it's dangerous to go alone at night out here. <laughs> I can imagine. Or, <laughs> with as high as these leaves are, I imagine during the daylight it's not too safe either, as they like to hide underneath these for yeah. shade. Yeah. Yeah. But we can always light it up, put a fence around it. That's true. That's true. Or we can change it up however we want to do it. Right. And just so everyone else can see, down here in our resource automation area, I went ahead and upgraded everything down here as well and get yes. us an auto smelter for that. That'll do stuff. Bigger chest for more material. Indeed, indeed. And a couple more singularities over here, like I got us a sand singularity, and also went ahead and did a dirt singularity, which I have a feeling you figured out already, seeing all the dirt upstairs. It's quite helpful. Yes, it was quite helpful. I imagine so. So, yeah. Materials for days. Indeed. Well, what do you say we go yeah. ahead and wrap up this... Looks like you also put in a... Uh... Water source over here. Oh, yeah, just in case, because we know how we are bad about refilling things. <laughs> so, this is true. This is true. I just went ahead and put one just in case down there. Oh, so, what are you saying? What do we say? What? Why don't we go ahead and take and finish out this getting started page on our quest log, seeing as I took care of the uh, completionist quests between episodes? Good. It wasn't much. It was just upgrading the regular furnace to the not. So, or not our badium furnace, and so on and so forth. Well, we talked about that last episode. That's true. So. Let's have the two left, and uh, I'm sure you and I both have killed some spiders between episodes. So. Oh, yes. I ended up killing lots of spiders because you needed a lot of zombie meat in order to make the dirt singularity. That took a little while. Spiders for the spider eye, so. Yep. Let's jump into this kebab. It's a bit dodgy, but oh, so good after a rough night, so. Good for them hangovers. So the not so good yum rod makes a fantastic skewer. Add on some rotten flesh, protein paste, and a spider eye, and you basically got the same thing served throughout the universe in late night takeaways. While the kebab in its raw form can be eaten, probably not a very good idea. Yeah, with Can't those ingredients, it. probably not. I wouldn't think it'd have a very good aftertaste. All right. So. You got some stuff for that? Yeah, I'm working on it right now. As y'all can see, too, we're kind of full on our storage drive here. And? There it is. What Raw is kebab. That finishes out that. A satisfying meal most of the time. It says cook a raw kebab in a furnace for that genuine smoky flavor. It's a good meal, but not all kebabs are the same. Even if you end up feeling a bit rough after eating one, at least you'll have satisfied your hunger for a bit. Yep. Yeah. Well. Cook her up, sir. Cook her up. <laughs> <laughs> 
There we go. Uh -huh. Chapter complete. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this kebab because I'm a little bit hungry. Got one to four. Oh. Ah, I got three kebabs. Oh, nice. Let's see, how many did I end up with? I got two. I'm not quite hungry yet, so I'll save one for later. Nice, that's our first chapter completion. Yes, it is. So that leaves us with an option. We can either jump into some tinkering and basically get to a point where we can make some wood and primitive tinker tools, you know, to get started. Or yeah, I we think can that's probably in. a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's do that. It doesn't look like we can go too far without getting cobblestone anyway, but it's always nice to have a tinker set up. Yeah, but we can get an axe that makes it better for chopping trees and stuff. Indeed. Oops, well, it's all right. Get dark. You start reading, I'll start sleeping. Yeah, we got this one quest for getting wood, so we got to start it here. I believe I read it last. Okay, so next one is Pattern Itty Test. What did it say? <laughs> pattern Itty Test. <laughs> Paternity test, sir. Paternity test. You wouldn't know anything that's about why, that's those. Why you should read it. No, I don't know anything about a paternity test. Yeah, no. No. To get to get started, you will need to make some patterns. Luckily, this is a simple to do. Patterns are used in some crafting recipes, but more importantly, will be used in a part builder to make the various parts that make up your tools. You need six patterns. Same recipe, sticks, planks. Need six of them? Yeah, six. I think each recipe makes two. Makes three. Oh, makes three. Nice. And our six. system is full over here. That's going to give us anywhere from 16 to 32 extras. <laughs> well. I got 32. <laughs> I got 22, apparently. Because I'm at 28 right now. Plenty of plenty of these. All right. So that gets us that. So oh, in case anyone's wondering, there is a feather in the system. One of those little chicken jockeys spawned at one point throughout one of the nights. Saw that. I was curious. I was like, "How did he get a feather?" Yeah, it was just a chicken jockey. I'll let that slide. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh. I thought we might have busted you using some ops or something. No. You would never do that, would you? No. I would never. <laughs> why Why would you ever? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. A better crafting table. A crafting station is essentially a crafting table, but, connect, but can connect to an inventory next to it, for example, a chest, as well as the other workstations in this section. It will connect to an inventory only if it is next to the crafting station, but for the other workstations, it will connect through them too, which means that moving from one workstation to another does not require leaving the user interface. Really handy. Which one was Indeed. that? That's the, uh, the better crafting table. Ah. Just need a... There. Crafting table and a stencil on top of it. There should be a, a crafting table there in the drawer or system. Already had it. Nice. That knocks that out. I'll go ahead and throw my patterns over here in this chest for the extra stuff. Well, I'm fixing to give you somewhere to put them. One stop tinkering shop. The tinker station is where you assemble your basic tools. You simply select the tool type you're trying to make, then supply the necessary parts. And, voila, new tool. We suggest you lay out your table so that the crafting station, part builder, and tinker station are all next to each other. That way you can move between them without needing to leave the interfaces, as they just told us. So three patterns and four planks. Has that always that. been the recipe? That looks a little no, different. No, this, this, is, this is newer tinkers than you're used to. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So it's going to look a little different for you. I played around with it a little bit. I see. There we go. And then we got to figure out where we want to put this thing. Oh, that's a good question. Want to put it outside? It's getting a little crowded in here. Sure. I mean, like I said, you're going to be the builder in this series, as most series. So, but for now, I'm going to throw it down right here. 
All right, sounds good. Actually, you know what? Let's. Um. Yeah, that's fine. We'll throw it there. All right, and the next one is somewhere to build parts. Got a feeling it's going to be a part builder. Ah, oh, who does thunk it? <laughs> the part builder is where you put in blank patterns and some kind of raw material, for example, wood or stone. You can then select the type of part that you want to build. These parts can be stored in a parts chest if you wish, but typically you will use the parts on a tinker station to assemble your tools. The part builder is fine for lower tier materials like wood and stone, but in order to make metallic and higher tier materials, you will need to make a bit more progress at first. All right. For Let's go build one of these, which looks like it's two planks, two patterns, but like that. All right, power builder. Quest complete. Awesome. Throw that here. Stencils actually go on the power builder. So there's that. Crafting table. Oh, yeah. Everything's there. So basically, you'll. So, the way this new Tinker system works is basically now in the part builder, you have the stencils or the patterns. Uh -huh. You put whatever material you want next to it. I'm just going to use a dirty example. And then you select what you want, and it makes it and puts it in the right. Okay. Kind of cuts out that middleman there. I was going to say, it seems a bit more streamlined. It is. See, there you know. Then you just take it out, and then once you're done, you go to the part builder and. Put it together. And they got those tabs at the top, so like they said, you don't have to right. back out. Cool. And we can also put a, a parts chest over here, too, and it'll all connect. So. Right, I remember doing that before. All right, next is trying it out. Use the part builder to make a small axe head, a tool handle, and a tool binding, all out of wood. Make sure that you get credit for these by putting them into your player inventory before moving on. Well, I just so make sure got some wood. I'll throw it out here for us. I'll yep. let you do the honors. Basically, it's saying not to uh, <laughs> not to build it without putting it in your inventory. Right. The binders look a little different. They do. And we'll go to the tanker station. Yes. Yep, quest completed. And choose the axe, and we build it up. Very nice. Sweet. Now you can build you one. Just did. Very nice. Very nice. First axe there. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and do a pickaxe, too, while I'm at it. Not a bad idea. Your first modifiable tool. In the Tinker Station, select the hand axe. On the left, the user interface will change, showing that you need to provide a small axe head tool, oh. a tool handle, tool binding. Basically, it's telling us what we just did. Right. To make an axe. Let's see. You'll notice that it breaks, does not disappear. It's like Tinker Tools. For anybody that don't know, you can break them and then repair them with the same material. Just telling you, you got to place it back in the tinkering station. Or you can make a... Sharpening tools or repair kits, whatever they are. Okay. Summarize all that. That having to read it. Awesome. Novel they put in there. Gives this one repair kit. That'll be handy. But you can also make them here in the part builder. Just I just noticed like that, yeah. Kit. Make you a bunch of them. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Let me, uh, I'm going to make my pickaxe myself. Ta -da. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and make a hoe, too, because I plan to do some gardening once we have seeds to do it with. So I don't think you can make a hoe with this. I think you can make a... Well, that's a comma. A matic. That's what you need to make. I don't know. The comma does it. Oh, the comma does? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Actually, I think the comma is the one you have to make. The matic is a... Is a shovel and a pickaxe and an axe all the same. Ah. Are gotcha. Paxels in here? Uh, that's a different mod. They are. Cool. Mechanism. 
Cool. So I think that's about as far as we can get in Tinkers right now. I don't know. It says we already have a small stone axe head. Mm. Do you have it? Because I don't have one. I don't either. Not hmm. sure what we get. <laughs> Not sure how that happened. But it does say we have one. Oh, well. We'll come as back to this. To a stone axe head. Huh. I wonder why. Because it gives you the option to check it off, and it says, I hereby confirm I have made an axe with a stone axe head. Ah. <laughs> but. Oh, it's the honor oh. system. And it just seems like it'd be better just to make it to where you have to make it to clear the quest, but whatever. Yeah. I guess we'll jump into getting going now, huh? All right. So seems to be where we're going next. Moving on down, it says. Congratulations, you've just about hit rock bottom. <laughs> have a free kebab on us. Great. They could have gave us that earlier. Right. Saved us some crafting. Yeah. The only way now is up. We're going to have to go through a period of back to basics for a bit. We really need to get our access to more familiar resources sorted out as soon as possible. The next while, we'll be going back to tried and tested techniques for extracting useful raw materials from somewhat mundane ores we have available. Mundane ones. Yeah, yeah, same thing. <laughs> a little different. Oh, only different. Just, just a little different. Just got to change one little letter out. Okay, well. Well, we can either go to the Shimmy Shimmy Shake. Uh, let's see. We got let's go crooks. from left to right. All right, we'll start with the not for sheep. Now that you have access to Ooh. wood and sticks. It's gotten dark outside. You can make yourself a wood crook. It's dark, but I'm standing outside. Me too. Take my butt back inside. Want me to sleep, or are you killing stuff? Uh, go ahead and sleep. I'm just throwing down some torches. Not a bad idea. All right, where was I? Basically, it says a crook can be used to break leaves on trees, getting a higher than normal chance of getting apples. Making a crook. Same recipe, some sticks. You should be able to just grab one of the ones we have in the system. That's true. I already made some last episode. That's right. There we go. Uh, let's go to the shimmy shimmy shake. Unless you just want to go get some apples first. Ah, go ahead. Actually, do we have some? I must have ate them all. All right, shimmy, shimmy, shake. Looks like we're getting into our sieve. Because now that we have some wood, we can put together a basic sieve, or more, to help with resource gathering. Sieves can work meshed together in up to a 5x5 five five arrangement, and it might help, or it might be worth making at least four to help speed up your processing. Oh, yes. So, yeah, we can put... Basically, 25 of them together in a 5x5 five five pattern. I don't think we got the materials for that right now. No, not quite. And I just hit the wrong button. Whoops. Good thing we killed a few spiders. Looks like we got enough to make a couple of meshes. And there we go. Got our first one. What else do we need for that quest? Oh, <laughs> need two sticks in our inventory. Oh, give me just a second. We'll craft us up some sticks. Bad part about this crafting terminal, if you don't put it in your inventory, you don't get credit for it. Right. All right, that's done. So now we'll jump over to the hammer. What's in a name? A lot, honestly. This is just ridiculous. Scientists and their stupid names for things. A smasher. That makes sense because you use it to smash things. A smoosher. That makes sense because you use it to smoosh things. But a hammer? Seriously? Where do they come up with this stuff? <laughs> Nevertheless, you'll need to make one. I mean, I guess they could have called it a, a basher. That's, yeah, that's, I suppose. Kind of what a 
continue the thing there. All right, let's see. Hold on just one second. To do one more thing. Boop. One more sieve there. All right, there we go. All right, well, let's make us one of these hammers. There you go. Wooden hammer. Uh -huh. Very nice. Very nice. Where are you putting these? Um, I was thinking we could put this stuff down in our little cavern because we're going to need room oh, for okay. it. Yeah, especially if we're going to do a 25, 5 by 5. Which eventually would make sense to do so. Eventually, he says. You already made 25 of these things? Oh, well. Although we don't have enough string for the meshes, I don't believe. Not yet. Very nice. Very nice. Always were an overachiever. Yeah, I try. Why do yeah. things more than once? That's right. Barrels of fun, it says. Oak barrels can be used to mix dry ingredients into liquids. They can also be used to catch rainwater, as well as composting materials into dirt. We don't need rainwater. We got oh, source. really? What? I spent six hours killing zombies and getting zombie flesh in order to make that singularity, because that's how you <laughs> make dirt. Yeah, but you have to have, you'd have to torque on a bunch of trees to make that dirt. It'd be something to do during the daylight. True that, true that. <laughs> <laughs> when making dirt, and for other automa automation, you can hopper into the barrel from the top and sides and hopper out from the bottom. For example, a hopper into the top can insert the leaves, use shears on the leaves. Wood chippings use hammer on logs. That's good to know. Oh. Saplings, etc., which will then compost into dirt, and the hopper underneath can extract the dirt to be stored. Once you have two stacks of dirt, you'll be able to create a dirt quantum singularity. What do you think about that, Bert? I'm, I'm a little ahead of him on that one. <laughs> and use that in an SRG for unlimited supply of dirt moving forward. Kind of have that already. Yeah. Kind of jumped the gun on that one. A little bit. Not even mad about it, though. Me neither. All right. You up top making a barrel for us or what? Yep. Yeah, I'm fixing to head that way. Right behind you. Moving along. Moving along. We really got to get some more storage. Yeah, it's opened up a little bit, actually. Barrels are fun. We have a barrel. For you uh, older viewers, you'll get the reference. <laughs> Not sure kids play with monkeys anymore. Oh, you'd be surprised. Yeah, probably would be. All right. Good. So that one's done. Where to next? We go from left to right again? Yeah, might as well. We'll need two more apples. Let me get this crook. Don't think we have an issue with trees at the moment. Yeah, we got a couple. I'm going to go ahead and put this barrel downstairs. Got to watch what I'm doing, because if I crook the wrong one, I'm going to take out a bunch of trees. Actually, it looks like I'm not going to have a choice. <laughs> Might have planted too close. Well, you could always just trim around the edges. I guess I don't know. Just don't vein mine, right? Yeah, well, that works too. Well, I got one. Let's see what I'm doing now. There we go. And there we go. Try out my new axe here. Ta da. Nice. And we'll put the tree back. Perfect. So that completes that quest. Once you have a few apples, a few more opportunities will open up to you. Firstly, they're pretty tasty, so help yourself to one. Secondly, they can be combined with rotten flesh in a quantum transmutation chamber to produce a rotten apple, which is fantastic. Um, why would why why would that be fantastic? That's a good question. <clears throat> and third, you can combine it with a water bottle to transmute it into apple cider vinegar. Which is also nasty, but good for certain health purposes. That's right. 
let's go ahead and do those last two next. All right, so it looks like we're going to make a rotten apple and some apple cider vinegar. Yeah, I already put the rotten flesh up there for you. Throw an apple in there. Sounds like you're getting ready for the vinegar over there. Yes, sir. There it goes. Nice. Oh, I'll put the rotten one in there. Regular uh, apple there, sir. Uh, that's not working. What did it say? Oh, it's an empty bottle. Oh. Well, in that case. Wouldn't, wouldn't that just be ap apple juice? That's kind of what I was thinking. Huh. Well, yeah, whatever. I ask no questions. There we go. Those two quests were very hard, but now we finished. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. You want to continue going with that one or jump to the ashes to ashes? Well, seeing as the next one is uh, silk, let's go ahead and go for the silkworms. Well, let's do that. Do you know that silk is primarily made up of protein fibers? Well, our science division did. And they figured out how to turn some of those useless worms infesting those rotten apples into more useful organisms by transmuting a rotten apple into some extra protein fibers. All right, so looks like if you put a rotten apple and protein fibers in the quantum transmutation dealie, you get six of them. Yep, but we got to get there first. That's true. So. You got to get that protein fiber. Okay, I'm done. Protein paste. What do we need for that? I'm making it right now. Excuse me. Jesus. This, this weather is playing with my sinuses. I'm sorry about that. Okay. You got that apple? I do. Go ahead and toss her in there. Let's do that. Get us some of these worms. Nice. Oh, wow. Six of them. Six of them and one. Nice. Now we just got to, let's see, you should have string already and now how to get more. But if you need a lot, in a short order, the easiest way now available to you is by putting those silkworms to good use. Simply place them onto the leaves of a tree, wait until the silkworms turn the leaves white, and then harvest the leaves with a crook. You should end up with tons of silky string in no time at all. We have 28. We have 28, but uh, we're fixing that a lot more. We are. Oh, getting dark. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and rest. So what we should do... Let's just pick one of the little trees real quick. Yeah, well, this one right here looks like it'd be pretty good. I'm going to... I think it gives you... Uh, let's infest them both. We'll, we'll, we'll be all right. Okay. I guess it'll, we should probably save... Should we save one or just use them all? Uh, I'd save one. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. And what we'll uh, do... What we'll do is, is we'll wait. infested? Is that the point? Yeah, it has to be infested. All right, let's go ahead and... Oh, Oops. you don't have a crook. I don't. Break that one right there for us. Aha! We have string oh, and another worm. That's good as worms. Okay. Well, looking uh, at the time we've been recording, why don't we uh, go ahead and cut here, and between episodes we'll get us a bit more string going, and see if we can't get our sieve system set up, so whenever we come back, we'll be ready to start on that adventure. Sounds good. We got quite a bit done today. So. We did get a little bit done, didn't we? Yes, we did. Well, guys, thank y'all for watching, and hopefully we'll catch you on the next episode. Till then. Yep. See you later later well folks thanks again for watching i hope you enjoyed this one if you did hit that like button for me and leave a comment to let me know what else you'd like to see don't forget to hop over to kairos's channel to see more from him until next time